welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our next donation deck today. We're going to be playing some Averrosen Fury. That's what we're calling this one, our Averrosen Allegiance deck with a lot of Freljord and a lot of Overwhelm. We have, as far as Averrosen cards, Averrosen Trapper, Averrosen Hearthguard, and of course Averrosen Outriders going to be our Allegiance card, granting the top ally in our deck plus three, plus three, and Overwhelm. And we've got lots of Overwhelm in here. Trindamir, Ancient Yeti, Sejuani, Alpha Wildclaw, all of those with Overwhelm, plus the Outriders granting more Overwhelm. Um, it's a really great combo with, like, the Avros and Trapper and Enraged Yeti, right? Because, like, the Trapper will put the Enraged Yeti on top of the deck, and then the Enraged Yeti is Freljord, of course, and so it will hit the Allegiance and give that Enraged Yeti plus three, plus three, and Overwhelm. That's something that we would like to do if we can. And of course we have Battle Fury, as far as our Fury goes, we have Battle Furies at the top end. We got three actual Battle Furies, and then also Trindamir's Champion spell can get us some more Battle Furies as well to just uh, finish games super fast. So let's see how we do here with Averroes and Fury. We're gonna go play our five games in Ranked. All right, and I'll set up the prediction here for y'all. All right, so played against some more Invoke with Ionia. Ionia usually means deny, which I hope they have a lot of denies because I don't have anything to deny except for Culling Strike in my deck. So I'm going to just keep everything. So leading with Omenhawk, that's always really good. I like the Avros and Trapper on three. Ancient Yeti is a good one to keep in hand, so you start reducing that cost um, at the end of each round. And then also Culling Strike is good against both of these champions. So we will keep that. So just keeping everything. One star's whoopsie is another spark. Discard a Leona. You're interesting. But my Culling Strike's so good against Leona. You're not sure if one Battle Fury should be a Flash Freeze or something other than that. I, I could see that. I see playing a Flash Freeze or a Harsh Winds or you know something like that that just helps you win a race. The trap is set. It's only one point of damage that I'm missing out on. Now the Enraged Yeti will not have the plus two plus two from the Omen Hawks. So we're still going to have uh, two units that get plus two plus two each from the two Omen Hawks. And then an additional unit, or the, then of course like our Enraged Yeti. So those are going to be our uh, three uh, units on top. So we know they have two Invoke cards. <clears throat> they have one Invoke card from the Spacey Sketcher, so something that costs three or less. And they have one Invoke card from the Solari Priestess, so something that costs four through six. Alright, just gonna kill that. Maybe they have another Leona. Which admittedly would not be ideal if they do have a Leona. <laughs> of course they do. Well, they played that perfectly around Culling Strike. If that was their goal. It was the first card. You cannot hold us down. We're probably going to have another um, another Enraged Yeti on top, which, is, which honestly with all this mana isn't really anything that I want to draw. What did we catch? So that I didn't really like having this other Averroes and Trapper, to be honest. That was, that was one of our worst cards that we could hit for like the plus two, plus two with that, that Averroes and Trapper. 
any of our bigger things would have been better. Hmm. Well, can't cast that yet. Protect you. Defiance is our way. I know your true heart. Shining softly. Ugh. And I get so many invoke cards. That new Targon, um, that new Targon monument that is just going to, you know, allow them to have something that costs zero every single turn with all this, when you have all these invoke cards is going to be insane. Targon's going to be pretty good. What once was two, now is one. Siblings once were inseparable. It's going to be pretty good. Alright, maybe Sejuani. I don't really want to play the Enraged Yeti and they have like the nine mana exile two things. You leave me no recourse. Try to leave a dent. Ever vigilant. I was hoping that they would only block one of these two overwhelms, and that then we could use like Culling Strike on whatever you know, we could use Troll Champ plus Culling Strike on whatever the other thing that blocked the overwhelm and maybe kill them with like the ten overwhelm damage. That's why I, like, I wouldn't mind them getting the lifesteal way over there and setting that up. Scary. They forced us to choose death or the blade. You tried to blind me with resplendence, but they could not break me. Ill meant by moonlight. I want to draw. I want Battle Fury on top. That's my best card to have on top. Face your heretic. They're challenging the five one because of Troll Chant. Because it still kills us through Troll Chan. United, nothing can stop us. Okay, so we did hit it, so it's not Culling Strike on top. It is Battle Fury. Close. I guess I have to play this. Let's see. So they've already gotten rid of, gotten rid of two Leonas. They should have just a bunch more Invoke cards in hand. Like I think these are just Invoke cards. Because of the, like, the invoke cards from, like, the Lunari Priestesses and stuff. Like, that's one of them. They should have another one from a Lunari Priestess. And, like, the one from the Mountain Scryer. Who would face me? I think I'll play it. King there's, obviously, there's things that can backfire, but I think I'll play it. That's probably a Pill Cascade. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably a Pill Cascade, which is a good sign for me. That is a good sign for me. All right. 
GG, he's got that Battle Fury on top in the form of Trindamir. They never stood a chance. Uh, they kind of stood a chance. All right, we are playing against some Ezreal Swain. They're going to be trying to kill our stuff. I don't want them to kill our stuff. Ezreal Swain. Okay. So we're going to mulligan the Ice Veil Archer. Because um, Ice Veil Archer is really easy to kill. I like Cooling Strike against both champions. We're going to keep that. Alright. We'll just trade with the 1-1. One, one. It's good to get that 1-1 one, one out here also, because then they don't get to just block the 1-1. One, one. You'll have the 1-1 one, one block like my Avros and Trapper or whatever. Okay. Uh, Omen, it would be great to play the Omen Hawk, but uh, can't really fit in Omen Hawk right right now. Would be, of course, this is a card you want to play earlier than later. The world's a big place. Let's see all. Of it. Yeah, the prediction thing is supposed to be open for one minute. That's the that's what I have the timer set at, and it's only. I can only choose like by minutes, like one minute, two minute, three minute, you so know, like that. I'm in. Okay, it is pretty dangerous, but if you're in, you're in. No going out. No takesy backsies. Uh. So tavern keeper, heal, trapper, or double omen hawk. I'm gonna go double omen hawk. Get a one mana 7-7 seven, seven on top of that Enraged Yeti. So next turn we go 7-7 seven, seven plus Outriders. Hmm. Or I guess we go Hearth Guard. And now we have a one mana 8-8 eight, eight next turn. Get him birdies. What if Omanok had elusive? Because you know it's a bird and everything. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. And you are always bragging about it. And became a soldier. United, nothing can stop us. Good. Not calling strike on top. Calling strike would kill the Swain for now, but. Battle Furious. Carved from the savage cold. All right, fill the valley. Well then. Somebody's battle furious. But they're down to just one card. What'd they discard? They discarded a tribe even probulator? Wow, that card's amazing. That probably means their last card has to be Leviathan. Which... Oh, Captain Perrin. Alright, that's fine. I hope this isn't destroy a damaged unit. Yeah, maybe I just shouldn't block. Maybe I just shouldn't risk it. As long as it's not destroy a damage unit. But even if it is, like, I'm going to have Battle Fury, so it's like... 
how do they really win? I don't think they can. But I just want to make sure that Ravenous Flock doesn't kill it. The attack was kind of signaling Ravenous Flock. That's that's what I expected with that attack. Oh, right. They just decimate, though. They stun it. I didn't think about the stun thing. Alright, they're still dead. <clears throat> so it was Death's Hand. They wanted to attack and then Death's Hand to kill it. That was a pretty furious bird. And now we're playing against some fearsome. Do I keep Sejuani? I'm definitely mulliganing the 8-mana cards. I feel like Sejuani is something that could help turn the game around. Let's see, I have the attack token on turn 7, so I'd have to wait till turn 7 for Sejuani. So now we're going to mulligan it. Good mulligan, good opening hand. This bird is so furious. This land is ours. Cool. The trap is set. Callista Elise. So like if like doing all the trades and stuff isn't great against Harrowing, but other option is you know not trading. I don't think that's a great option. I think that we should be trading. Whoa, they taken damage. I am surprised that this arachnoid horror didn't trade with anything. We go where the war mother bees. Oh, it missed. So I have Culling Strike on top. Made a two out of thirty-three chance. So 6% chance of missing and we missed. 6% chance. 94%. Wasn't high enough. A sign of brighter things to come. Yeah, I wonder what their plan is. Do I attack in with everything? What do y'all think? Do I just attack in? Yeah, they level up Callista. Could also pass. 4-4 four, four trade with Wraithcaller. All right, spill the valley. I guess the, it's all Overwhelm. Looks like Mark of the Isles. Because I don't think it's Pill Cascade because I haven't played a spell yet. But this is, Attacking with two things doesn't allow them to level up Callista. Of course, a leveled up Callista would bring back Wraithcaller. We don't really want that. Then we can Alpha next turn. I'm really surprised if, if that's your plan is these two things, they, they should lead with their Arachnoid Horror and then go Skitter afterwards. Leave nothing standing. I 
Atrocity doesn't kill me. I don't think they have vengeance. There we go. Just decided to sp split it up just in case they had something weird, like they're just playing like a hush. I don't know, or something weird. Battle Fury! We Furious. Yasuo Leona. Playing against some Yasuo. Alright, Yasuo Leona. I don't really love this opening hand. I'll keep Coaling Strike, I guess, because it's just always. The Coaling Strike is just such a good card. Ugh. I don't really like this mulligan. And the other the other thing I really like about keeping Coaling Strike with this deck is it takes out, you know, like, there's only three cards that Avros and Outriders misses, the three Coaling Strikes. So keeping Coaling Strikes means that it's less of a chance that you have one on top whenever you play Avros and Outriders. Unyielding light. Wow. Punish <laughs> I guess I could use a Culling Strike right now, but... Welcome to the tipsy up. So I want to be able to Culling Strike Yasuo if they play Yasuo. Follow the wind. Watch your back. There we go. All right, had that set up. So now we do know that our um, Freljord cards are 100%. 100% Freljord. That worked out. So I could kill that thing by going Troll Chant Culling Strike. The Culling Strike on the left didn't want to work. I'd use the one on the right. They have a whole bunch more cards in hand than we do. Mm, hate seeing that. Another Robin. I just kind of wasted the Troll Chant Cooling Strike to kill that first Robin. This is a great time to just go like all in on the Battle Fury, considering they uh, they play all the stun cards, right? Like they're a Yasuo deck, so I like I I like attack or like Battle Fury. They just play Concussive Foam. No, I don't think they'd be an out of the way deck. No, I mean this this was just created randomly by Robin. How Robin creates a Daybreak card. To shine like the sun, you must burn like it. The dawn has arrived. It's too bad. Don't get to Culling Strike that. I shouldn't use that Troll Chant. Shouldn't use the Troll Chant Culling Strike the previous turn. Just got another Daybreak card out of their hand. 
Cool. You want me to just do attack? I'll, I will attack. Not super confident here with them having all the stun cards and everything. And of course being at 19. I think they have a... I think they they had like another... They have a morning light. They like wanted me to play something and then they were going to like morning light. You cannot swing. All right, do I go for the win? Might as well go for the win, right? Let's force them to have something. All right, they had something. But there's not really anything more valuable than a winning the game. And that is what we would have done if they didn't have anything. Obviously, hate seeing Hush plus the Scourge. That doesn't look good. Unyielding light. Glorious light rains down. Our strength is yours. Yep, they had the morning light. So that should be game that's gonna stun two things. Look at the challenger. Believe that's game. Bask in the light's radiance. I was too greedy on that troll chant kill their Robin play. Especially how they had that Leona later. I needed to kill Leona. But then, you know, they did just play Leona's morning lights, they would have had another Leona. Oh, yep. <laughs> All right. I thought I was going to win that, but uh, that gets us our loss for our 4 1. Oh, we got a mirror match. Another overwhelmed deck, but they're Draven, Darius, Trundle. So, Overwhelm Mirror Match for the 4-1. Let's keep a Ruthless Raider and then Trapper Trapper. Could keep another Ruthless Raider and then be able to... Maybe, let's just keep them all. We keep the other one so that, like, turn 4, turn 5, we go, like, Ruthless Raider plus a couple of Yetis. Really, really, Mafia plot. It took it took your points from the last one because I did something that said like delete and return points. That's what I I chose that as my option. The winter's claw strikes. This will shake him. Behind you. I'll take everything. All right, just going to just going to trade instead of me continually taking damage from this sabotaged Legion saboteur. All my stuff is going to trade with this Crimson Disciple anyway. Joke debate. All right, let's get these enraged yetis. And uh, on top of the decks, so we can draw them as fast as possible. I'm glad we drew this kindly Tavern Keeper.
Yeah, there there is some kind of there is some kind of logic behind the card trades and expeditions that they have set up. There is some it's not just random, there is some kind of algorithm with it. I don't know what it is, but you say you said that you feel like it, the trades are dumb 75% of the time. That's probably good though, right? That's probably the correct if you're if you're designing the expedition, that's probably the correct thing is to have a Delicious poor trade more often than not. You don't want it just to be always just be awesome trades all the time. And so because you want it to be you want it to have some skill with the trades of like knowing if it's a good trade or a bad trade and things like that. Over there. I'm expecting a troll chant. That's my expectation here. I don't want them to, I don't want the Crimson Disciple to survive damage with the troll chant and do an extra point to me. Okay. Well looks of wrath. Wasn't the one I was expecting, but that's all right. Yeah, or like a transfusion. And let them deal another point with their Crimson Disciple. Don't want that to happen. What did we catch? All right, got our immediate Enraged Yeti. So we're good at trapping him. Let's see if we get another immediate Enraged Yeti. Just too good. These stories were true. We're too good. You won't be pet. Leave your tracks in the door. I'm gonna play the, the kindly tavern keeper. Because it it doesn't trade with the disciple. Okay, I'll take that. Alright, GG's. That'll do. Four and one. Perfect. Just like we predicted beforehand. Now we're gonna have to go 5-0 with Lucian Shivana. And two three <laughs> two wins, three wins, four wins. And now we got the pressure to go 5-0 with Lucian Shivana. Alright, so there we go. Avaros and Fury went really well. Went really well. Um we didn't draw Alpha Wild Claw too much. I don't. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we we did play it one time. Never mind. We did play an Alpha Wild Claw once, but didn't didn't have that too much. But uh, had some good top decks. We had some really good top deck like Battle Furies, a good top deck Trindamir. Um, so yeah, we ended up with some good top decks. But uh, played against a lot of like or played against like a couple Ezreal decks. And I think those are going to be some good matchups. And uh, played a Mirror. Um, overall, did really well. So there we go. Averroes and Fury. It's a cool deck. Love the Colleague Strike. That's a great, great card to, to splash. Glad we were splashing that one. It was really good for us a lot of the time. But anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. And uh, if you try it out yourself, how's it going? Or anything else about any decks you want to see or any questions about the gameplay. Whatever you got. Love to see those comments. But thank you so much for watching some Avarosen Fury. And I'll see you for the next video.